Welcome to Quirks in Conversation with Davida Breyer. Yes, I am so looking forward to talking to her, Kathy. Uh, I have to tell you that reading her book was like a dive into my past. <laughs> minus the murder <laughs> yes yes thankfully not that it was just set in florida you know around the same time i was growing up so it was fun it'll be fun to talk to her but first oh, let yeah. me um tell everyone a little bit more about her so davida g Breyer was born in miami and spent her formative years in florida minnesota new jersey and pennsylvania she worked as a youth sports photographer substitute teacher done that jewelry maker done that <laughs> um bookseller check, and check. yeah an atm cleaner i don't i don't know um davida <laughs> discovered the world of zines and independent publishing in 1994 and the baltimore city paper awarded her with the best local zinester in 2000 Wait, is it zine or zine we have to ask zine oh <laughs> <laughs> and best zine in 2003. We're going to ask her a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, about that. we are. I can't wait. Um, she has spent the last two decades in various roles within the book publishing industry and is now the director of distribution division, the distribution division at Johns Hopkins University Press and the co-director of marketing and sales for the Johns Hopkins University Press Books Division. Davida lives in Maryland with her family, a pack of We Rescue Dogs, a rescue tortoise, and two companion chickens. Uh, her debut novel, which is Sinkhole, yes, um, it is. is coming out to great reviews. In fact, the Publishers Weekly said a clever plot and astute characterizations help drive this coming of age tale with a malevolent twist. Readers will eagerly await Briar's next no novel. I'm throwing that one in, the novel part. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it out, editor. Okay. Um, Davida, it is so nice to see you. And it's great to be here. It's so nice to meet both of you. Thanks. Yes, we're glad this you're here. It's going to be a great conversation. I know. I'm okay. very excited. Okay. So, so, yeah, most important thing before we get started, we always start with a wine. And because that really is, it's wine and then crime, right, Christy? <laughs> I think it's okay, crime whatever. Wine. <laughs> right. um, but Davina suggested a, a, a Shiraz or Syrah, Shiraz. We've discussed this many times. But anyway, we love that. And so we are going with the layer cake today. Um, it's from Australia. So let's first do a cheers to Davida and her fantastic debut novel. Cheers. I got my arsenic cup. Oh, no, cool. no, that's cool. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, so here's the tasting notes. Aromas of cocoa, warm spice, dark fruit are very powerful from the first whiff in the mouth. The wine is layered with rich blackberry, dark cherries, and hints of dark, creamy chocolate ganache. All of the good things in life. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it, uh, anyway, it goes on, but it's it, it's nice. It's yeah, I like this one. Thanks yeah. for choosing that. I know, good choice. Um, I actually, I was under quarantine, and I thought I, I assumed I'd have plenty of time. I was going to go get the layer cake. I picked a different one, and I was <laughs> like, "Oh, I'm going to get the layer cake." Now that I know, I had to have a family friend go out and get me wine and drop it off on the front porch because I couldn't leave the house. <laughs> this is an emergency. This is an emergency wine run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, we're sorry you were quarantined, but we're glad you're back with us now. So. Yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So before we get started, I probably should give a little bit of a synopsis of Sinkhole here because um, mm -hmm. I love the description um, on her website um, where it's, it starts out with boiled peanuts, love bugs and murder. <laughs> <laughs> and hits home with know, know that know that well down here in the south um so the story is lies from the past and a dangerous present collide when after 15 years in exile michelle miller returns to her tiny hometown of Florida, florida <laughs> there's a story there i'm sure with her mother in the hospital she's forced to reckon with a broken relationship she left behind with her family, with her high school best friends, Sissy and Morrison, and with herself. As she confronts a troubling death, she'll need to face the past in order to survive. 
But what if everything she remembers is a lie or just dangerous? Or what if it isn't? <laughs> anyway, I, I think that's a great description. And the book was that was really, really like a page turner. So, so oh, we're, yeah. yeah, we're happy about that. And as I mentioned earlier, it did bring back a lot of memories because I grew up in South Florida um, for, you know, a while for, and I was born down here and stuff. So, um, and now I'm back in Florida and I have lived in central Florida too. So I know those love parts <laughs> really well. Um, but it, you know, it also reminded me of a lot of issues that as, you know, a straight white girl at the time, I look at them so differently now. And on your website, you have a discussion question that really kind of struck me. It's the one about, um, is it nostalgic or anti-nostalgic or both? Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about what you meant by that. And So I, I think too, I mean, I started writing this in 2016, the end of 2016, mostly 2017. And I think we're seeing a whole lot of things like Stranger Things. You know, even even um, Yellow Jackets has a has a layer of nostalgia to it as well. And it's it's almost as if because people are looking back through a prism of a child's eyes, everything seems so much better. But in many respects, things weren't great. I mean, there were things going on that that were very tough. You know, for a whole lot of demographics in the '80s. And believing everything is is all fluorescence and conspicuous consumption and happy sitcom families, I think you know, was detrimental to people then. It's also detrimental to look back and think that's really how life was. Right. Mm -hmm. I well, I mean, look at the whole "Make America Great" <clears throat> again, movement type thing. It's like, well, maybe for some people you think that, but no, for a lot of people it wasn't so great, and things have yeah. progressed to mm -hmm. better places. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I really kind of saw that because because when you're reading your book, you kind of do you put yourself back, or at least I did because it was my age group. Mm -hmm. And um, I would put myself back to when I was in high school and I would think about other students, you know, and I was like, oh, gosh, you know, I just didn't I didn't understand what they were going through, you know, mm -hmm. and and it kind of puts a whole new light on things. And it kind of, you know, brings back, you know, you're a little bit regretful that you didn't realize at the time. So I think things are better now in that perspective, I think, as far as my kids are concerned, and I'm sure they'll have other things when they get older, but they, you know, I believe approach things a lot differently than we did. And I'm hopeful for that. And yeah, I mean, for the characters, there's, there is that sense of isolation. They're in rural central Florida. There's no internet. Right. You oh can't gosh. even make a phone call without a substantial amount of, of quarters or money of some kind. Mm -hmm. So the isolation um, socially and physically, and even just learning about new things. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm of that age group too, where you used to have to write away for things. You used to have right. to go to the city <laughs> to find things. Right. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> now two seconds, if a kid is questioning kid is dealing with you know am I the only one am I alone three minutes later the internet will tell them they're not right right as you know and so while there is a detriment to to that overexposure that they get to absolutely everything now there is also something to be said for that shining a light on things that used to be kept so secret or hidden or oh. just you know that isolated individuals mm-hmm Yes, it's so interesting. I, I love this conversation because I I think that it's um, I love I love nostalgia, right? I love looking back and hopefully finding the good things in the past mm -hmm. that are worthy of celebration. But then, aren't you supposed to also look back with what we've learned and think, "Wow, that was really unfortunate for that group of people or for that person." And um, but it feels like we don't do a good job of both. Either we are in one camp or the other. You know, I think like a, like a uh, somebody was just saying to me the other day about, you know, someone who um, looks back to high school, perhaps, or middle school is like the best time, like it was so great. And she's like, what a comfortable feeling, how lucky for them that they felt so great about that. But also, how sad that every day since hasn't been better, you know, and right. I just, 
it, and 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 I loved how you talked about um, is it anti nostalgic or is it nostalgic? Because I think maybe it could be both. Like, could we look back and <laughs> look at the good, but then also, oh, that was not good. <laughs> that well, and, it, and in that way too, the one character she's driving back, she's confronting that because yeah. there is good and bad as she's. Yeah going back there were good times there are things yes. that can be remembered that aren't you know painful but then there are things to kind of reconcile and to mm -hmm. acknowledge in a different way because you're reframing it differently as an adult right I, I, on that note I have to say this is one of my favorite first chapters I've ever read and because I you just sucked me in in like one second I <laughs> this girl i want to know exactly what was going on what was going on in florida what was I, I mean all the things like all of the textbook what sucks readers in yeah it was very very um compelling from the get-go which i loved so yes, yes okay so we gotta talk about florida so i am the only one who's never lived in florida <laughs> <laughs> and i um i i live in south dakota so we have our own fair share of crazy here like there's no question <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have the florida man <laughs> we don't have we don't have the florida man we got lots of lots of things but not we florida shines and crazy which is fabulous yeah but I, is florida florida a place in real like a real place so funny thing about that <laughs> good we it is a real man. place and as i would learn a year after i had been working on the novel it's pronounced Lorita. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> I had, I too had been calling it Florida, Florida, and I found it on a map. It was exactly, exactly where I wanted the book to yeah. be set, and it's that <laughs> wild part. And, and so, I took a research trip, and I went down, and I went, I'm in, I went out onto Lake Estepoga, and I was, I was checking to make sure I got it right. Oh, I didn't yeah. want to do a disservice, and so I went to the Sebring Historical Society, and you know, naive. Oh, I'm here doing this. I'm looking for stuff. And and the woman there like gave me yearbooks and newspaper. I mean, it was a treasure trove for a writer. And I, you know, I've been there about an hour. I'm like, so, so I asked her something about Lord of Florida and she just looked at me and went, do you mean Lorita? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I might. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yep. And then, and then I'm, I'm working on the, I'm working on everything file edits this winter. And I'm like, Oh my God, I just have her word for it. Just been messing with me. I mean, that's like something someone would do, right? So I it's call totally. the, I call the, the Sebring Public Library. Hi, I'm just fact checking exactly how you say that town to the west or to the east of you. It's it's Lorita. Oh, oh that's face so is hurting. interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, that's like so, how everybody calls Kissimmee, Kissimmee. Right, yeah. <laughs> Our state capital is, it's pronounced around here, Pierre. It's Pierre. I mean, that's how it's written, Pierre. Mm -hmm. But South Dakotans, like, that's the one way they know they don't, like, trust you or they don't know anything about us. Because oh, I'm glad you told me that. I never knew yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because every so often, you know, we'll make the news because there's not much going on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, maybe the weather. That's probably usually it. And and if 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 Pierre and the forecaster pronounces it Pierre, they're all like, ah, oh, like they're critical. <laughs> Who would know? <laughs> Who would know that? Well, that, that, that was the question I had too, because um, the, I have a unpublished um, book that I have written that is set in a small town, but I changed the name a little bit in South, you know, in Southwest Florida, because I was so worried that I wasn't going to, you know, somebody would be annoyed if, if, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't get it exactly right or the name of, but there's, is there anything in Lorita? Is there? It's, it is a tiny town. So they actually you have know. like, I, I stand to have, you know, <laughs> it, I don't know how people in Lorita will feel about my characters. And, and I, yeah. I tried to give, you know, be it's fair pretty... because it, and there's a lot of love for the actual land yeah. and the place mm -hmm. in my eyes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but and it's said know. in the past, too. So, you know, like if it was said in the present and you're like, oh, they're hanging out at whatever, you know, movie theater. 
And they're like, no, that's not what's, you know, then people might say something, I guess. I, I, I did take a few liberties on things like the movie. I don't, I, I, I couldn't <laughs> find record of a movie theater in the circle, but it was such a great place for one. I wondered one day. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. I know. <laughs> you know, um, I've been thinking about another <clears throat> book and another author we've talked to so much during this conversation, because like Christy said, she grew up in Florida. This, this, is, this rings very true to her. 80s, right? Um, we talked to Jess Lowry about unspeakable things, and she wrote a book that took place in the 80s, but in Minnesota, which is in more of my neighborhood, but also yours. You used to live in Minnesota, too. I think I, I think I know which one you mean. Yeah, I unspeakable I things. One. It was just a couple of years ago. She had great success. Yeah. It was really a, a very successful book for her. And it was kind of a look back at, a, at her hometown that she grew up in. Um, and what really happened, there was a there's a serial killer and. Um, I, I read that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great book, but it, it reminds me very much of Sinkhole because it's a look back and it's that same thing of, wow, that was a really kind of precious time, but wow, we also overlooked a lot of things. Like we ignored a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean it, it, yeah. And, and well, I, I, Christy, I don't know where you grew up, but I mean, Adam Walsh kind of defined my my childhood too. Like, oh yeah! Wow, no, the world is an absolutely oh no. The place the here. mall was right. I mean, I'm in Broward County, Adam Walsh? you know. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that's where you his know. son. Yeah, yeah, it was the mall that probably you know my parents had yeah. been to and things. You know, it was yeah. like oh. yeah, it was well, yeah, it, down And here. so when crime, especially during that time, it, we we all felt very safe, right? I, I mean, I was in a small town. We rode our bikes everywhere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean even though it's for our parents it's to track populated us, you know? i did the same thing yeah. yeah and and so when you find out real monsters actually live there that's yeah that's pretty, pretty scary yep mm. yep yeah and right. it makes good <laughs> crime fiction it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> um so i speaking of the time frame one of the things i loved also um is you have a playlist on your website oh yeah Oh, I'm in ninth grade all over again. <laughs> like Adam Ant. I was like, Adam Ant. I haven't thought about Adam Ant music forever. So how fun was it to create that playlist? It was. And one of the things I did when I was working on the book is I would sometimes just try to get into the head of each of the characters. So I would have these little mini playlists for each of them oh. to kind of think about what they were into or in, listening to or enjoying and so that oh, that's good yeah that so is the, good. That playlist, that's a neat idea <laughs> the playlist kind of tries to follow a bit of the the story oh mm -hmm. neat now i'm gonna look at it all over again because i yeah. um but i love i've heard of you know i've always heard of authors you know i'm putting to their playlist that kind of you know is a feel of the book evokes whatever but i've never heard of anybody say from each character's perspective and i thought mm -hmm. that's a really cool way to get into your character like yeah. what what they're emotionally responding to because yeah especially if it's your time frame because you can look back and you could be like oh my gosh i i know this person listened to that <laughs> and that this person i kind of feel is like this character or whatever i was kind of <laughs> judgy about sissy's taste in music at <laughs> and you right, have should someone be. like that yeah i think so <laughs> anyway that's hilarious right. okay so let's take a minute and have a little drink it's time for the question in the bottle which is a question, a random question that you okay. might end up talking about at the end of a bottle. So <laughs> go for it, Christy. Oh, gosh. All right. So what are the top three things on your bucket list? Um, scuba diving in, in <gasps> other places. Um, I got my open water certification a few months before COVID started, and I haven't been able to go oh. since. So really it's scuba diving scuba diving scuba diving <gasps> and just in different places oh I my love gosh. that I, I I was thinking of my three and one of them is scuba diving the Great Barrier Reef yeah really because because yeah. Chrissy you're, you scuba before haven't you <laughs> yeah yeah I started scubaing scubaing if that's a word <laughs> when I lived in Central Florida I lived in Orlando um, when I was around 18 19 20 worked at Disney and I took the, our diving classes. So we went to the Springs around there oh. and stuff, but it's been a long time, but I still, I, I want, I've been wanting to go to Australia and the barrier reef. So I was like, that's one seeing yeah. the Northern mm. lights. I really oh, want to see the yeah. Northern lights mm. and 
what else? I have always wanted to see the Midnight Sun. Oh, okay. Okay, let's all just everyone just needs like has to travel. I mean, it's just like, of course, you recently did, and it didn't turn out so well. Yeah, no, I I, I canceled I canceled the next trip, but but no, I, I yeah, I love the water, and I just I just want to oh. go and see. I want to go see things in the water and well you and come down places. here and and we'll go diving <laughs> down in the keys we can do that yeah, that's, oh that's where gosh. i got my that's where i got my certification okay so you've done that all right so there you go oh all gosh. right so where else um, i and and i um tahiti I a, go out to the south pacific that's a good place <laughs> and and i'd love to you know indonesia apparently has some really great dive spots thailand I will go anywhere there are things I love. I love invertebrates. I want to go see all the invertebrates, octopus, <laughs> new to branch, whatever. Okay. <laughs> would you, would you go into caves, underground caves? No, I have, that is my one limit. I am not a fan of, of caves and I, I cave diving probably terrifies me more than just about anything. I, yeah, no, you know, my husband know. loves watching, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, nature channel stuff all the time. And he, you know, have have cave diving on him, and I I can't hardly watch it. It makes me no. I feel like, yeah, no, I agree. And, and I'm cool. Like I've gone, and there have been sharks. I'm like, hey, cool, a shark. You know, but but cave diving, forget it. Oh yeah, Mm-mm. no, I wouldn't do that either. Mm-mm. But that my um, I I have my my master's is in marine ecology, so I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> and I want to go, but I want to go dive. I want to go like swim with mm-hmm. whale sharks. Oh yeah. So those those are not invertebrates, but hey, wow. I want to do it. <laughs> eagle ray, wow. a whole bunch of eagle rays. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I did I did dive with manta rays before. They're humongous. I have not like like that big, like your arm wing, like wings. No, no, bigger, we're talking bigger. like my really? apartment. Bigger. <gasps> it was in the it was in the South Pacific. My my ex worked for a cruise line, so we got a good deal. But um it was oh. they would just they had a w- route where they would go and it was just underwater like flying mm-hmm. well, that so makes amazing. me want to cry that sounds beautiful oh. yeah ray, ray is swimming like that it does it's the most graceful beautiful thing in the world i'm gonna look up some videos on that just so i can have like a thing yeah that'll that'll be a calming oh, thing i think because <laughs> i'm glad you mentioned that because i really oh, know I, i'm gonna start thinking about a future of diving again <laughs> it's well, so peaceful we, after all this i mean peaceful. honestly yeah it's been a anyway it's been a couple of years right okay so <laughs> let's get into the zine or zines have you been oh, yeah. these i i am sorry to tell you i have never heard of this uh of the zine world and i would love to learn about it sure um They've always been around in some form. I mean, essentially, it's independent publishing and it's individuals just wanting to kind of share or write or do. And they've been around, you know, in various forms all along. A lot of the modern history points back to, say, sci-fi zines of the 1930s where people were were working together. Sometimes they would have um, amateur press associations and people would collaborate or they would contribute to one. Um, There was a huge resurgence in the 90s. And, you know, there was a lot of music, politics, um, personal stories, uh, you know, pretty much people wanting to connect with other people. And again, you're talking pre-internet times Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where this is how you had to figure out how to find your people, how to communicate. And it was all in the mail and it was accessible. All you needed were stamps without the internet. Yes. And in many (laughs) cases, yes. Um, you know, people might write about what they found at a thrift store or their obsession with music or their political beliefs or just what they, you know, what they ate for dinner before they, you know, had the opportunity to post on Instagram. You might do a cook scene. And um, so I started I started in zines in the mid 90s. I've done, I don't know, five, six, seven titles at this point, some per zine, some thematic. Um, I do a review zine about other zines to kind of help keep the word going it's it's yeah you know and I've done that since 1999 but you know a lot of the people who started contributing were were very young writers and publishers and they're still contributing 
even if they have 10 books under their belt or they run a wow. publishing company in a bookstore or, you know, they're working uh, in publishing in some other way. A lot of us, a lot of us grew up and into publishing by this entry point because publishing isn't a linear place often. Right. And so, <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, that's, I don't know if we could call this your de debut novel then. <laughs> I, I have no, I have never done fiction before. Okay. Okay. So I, always, <laughs> I stuck to, I stuck to essays and things like that. So yeah. It's oh, so, very okay. cool. so what triggered the, what triggered your jump into fiction? Um, because it had always been the thing I held in the highest regard and that I was always terrified of. It was the thing that, you know, it, bad fiction is the worst thing. It's just, <laughs> it's it, 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 the thought of writing bad fiction is like worse than running through the streets naked. <laughs> and it took me a really long time to give myself the grace mm. to be bad at writing and to do something and to, to struggle and potentially fail. And, but I, I reached that age where I'm just going to give it a try. What's the worst right. that's going to happen? Because if I don't do it, it's never going to happen. Right. And I'm getting too old to really care what people think anymore. Oh, yeah. isn't that so cool? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that moment where you're like my fear of failure and just abject, like, you know, rawness. Yeah. Diminishing over. What if I don't do this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and grace comes in. That's beautiful. Love that. And, and, and you reach a point where you reach an age where you failed enough where what's one more. Yeah. Like, right. Right. What's what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. Well, right. and look what happened. I mean, this is not the worst. Yeah. This is a good, no. I mean, this I is like a fantastic. Too. I do too. <laughs> did you have, did you have any involvement? Like, did you like, how was the cover design? Cause it's really cool. Um, it's actually a photo I took on the research trip. No, but um, <laughs> New, Orleans, New Orleans is a fantastic, fantastic collaborator. They sent me all the drafts of the cover images. That one just struck me the hardest. I really, really liked it. And I, it wasn't until the next day because I saw them late in the evening and I was like, hey, I think I like this one. I got up the next morning. I didn't realize it was originally my photograph. I it took me a minute. I recognized the other two that were mine, but that one I, I was like, wow, wow. That, they did it. They did a great job. Those are really Florida looking skies. Right. I'm like, wait a minute. Let me go look at my Hello. phone. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen a real life sinkhole? Um, as far as, you know, I've, I've seen, I've been, I've been to the devil's mill hopper. Have you ever been to that state park? It's a big um, sinkhole in a state park. Like I've seen them. I haven't seen them form, but I've seen them the results in, in yeah part, i mean that's probably what a lot of the springs mm -hmm. and things are i guess probably right. now that i think about it yeah i mean i you know i see like i always get afraid though when i'm driving or something and there's like a you know like a big looks like the pavement is sort of like made a big puddle and is it like, a pothole or <laughs> yeah or is it as, as soon as i drive over they're gonna swallow me <laughs> that's scary yeah, that's the Florida that's, thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have one more quick question. I'm going off script, Christy. I'm sorry, but. No, um, that's okay. You published with University of New Orleans Press, and you work for a university press. I do. So I am very, um, when I think of university presses, I don't think fiction. It isn't. I just figured, oh, sorry. Okay. I was going to say, I figured that, um, you did it at um, Johns Hopkins Press. I'm surprised I didn't notice. So, so fiction isn't a huge, huge part of university press publishing, but there are university presses that do publish fiction and University of New Orleans largely does a lot of um, hmm. fiction. They have at least one or two each season. Sometimes it might be collected stories. Um, sometimes, it, you know, it just depends. They, they do do fiction. Um, and, and there are other university presses that definitely have fiction on their lists. Um, university Press of Minnesota has some good fiction on their list. Yeah, they, they're very progressive. The, the Loft Literary, that, that is great there, yeah. Where did you live in Minnesota when you lived in Minnesota? Um, in Forest, uh, Forest Lake, Rindle, out near Crookston, and very briefly in St. Paul. 
Okay. I lived in St. Paul too. I was, I went to law school there. So anyway, I was curious. <laughs> Side note. Um, <laughs> so how do you end up um, at a university press? I mean, I would think I was like, oh, maybe they would publish literature professors books or something, you know? Yeah. So it's a funny thing. On, oh, it, I had been working on the novel mostly through 2007. I finished it in early 2008. I sent out some some early raw drafts to a couple of agents, a couple of publishers, and they passed rightfully because it wasn't ready. It wasn't time. And I put it aside because that's what you do because you get discouraged and you've got other mm -hmm. things going on in life. <laughs> and I changed job. I, I was still at Johns Hopkins, but I changed the job I was doing. It was, there was a lot more going on. Pandemic hits and, you know, I'm working 50, 60 hours a week. It's nonstop. The strain, I, my <sighs> family had some health issues and it was just unending stress. And in January of that year, my, I started having like, something doesn't feel quite right. My blood pressure was doing funny things. I go to the ER and they're like, yeah, now this is basically stress. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I should probably do something about that. And I should probably do something for myself and something that, you know, is not working 50 to 60 hours a week. And about that same time, within about a week or so, the University of New Orleans Press sends me um, their title list for their fall, fall 21 season. They're also a client because I handle their distribution. Wow. I have also worked with them wow. through three distribution companies now. So GK Darby, the managing editor, I worked with him. I've worked with him a couple of other times and, and I was also his distributor for a press he, he runs. And I mean, I've known them for like 15 years. So he sends me this list and he, and on the list is a book called Disorder and it's psychological fiction. It sounds fantastic. It's, you know, it's written from the perspective of someone with, um, bipolar disorder. And I was like, oh, hey, this is interesting. This is psychological fiction. I'm not used to seeing this on, on a university press list, back to what you kind of said. Like, mm -hmm. Genre fiction isn't as uh, necessarily quite as common in the UP world. And, and I talked to him a little bit about that. And I sent him um, an email, which was like the worst pitch ever about this book I was working on. And I didn't want to see. This was really awkward. And that I should probably not be sending this email and that he wasn't interested, essentially. <laughs> You're just letting him know how, his, how he would feel about it. <laughs> <clears throat> so what I don't know is that he has an interest, a particular fascination with Central Florida. Oh, okay. See, that, everything's are all, all that is aligning, shivers. you know? It's like stress. Emergency room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Work. So, like central florida okay keep going this so is I, I i send it to him i am also because i'm just you know he, he, in my mind is just like whatever it, it's cotton fluff at this point from a pandemic <laughs> and everything else i wasn't even thinking that the editor-in-chief had also written a coming-of-age novel called tales of the punk rock nothing and they're they're uh, you know about the same age and and Three weeks later, I had a contract. And wow. I oh, see. I just got chills. Me too. Me <laughs> too. But, but I, I couldn't have wanted a better home. And I, yes, it's a little awkward. I know them. And then I realized, okay, this is going to be awkward enough to sell my own book too. Cool. Um, <laughs> so, but, but, you know, trying to be super ethical about everything, but, but realizing they were the right publisher. They wanted to oh. invest in, you know, making sure that it was right and done right and the developmental edit they could because they do about six six books a season they could they could really work with me and, and I mean we're we're emailing almost every day so okay. you know it's it's so collaborative you know the cover was collaborative the, the edit was collaborative the marketing has been collaborative and it That's really it, it's 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 having worked in publishing for well over 20 years I know that this was a gift and and to have a publisher where you're you're working this collaborative is it, collaboratively is fantastic yeah that is a, that's that is great a, that is a wonderful story to come out of this terrible pandemic yes it is yeah especially with abject stress leading to going back. yeah it's you never know you're gonna go to the er and you end up with a book deal so 
<laughs> the usual so, course of things. I mean, most authors have that experience, I'm sure. So yeah. are you still, are you, are you writing another one? Or are you, what's your I, I have some notes started. I have an idea. You know, I oh. have my opening line. I have my, I have my thumb drive. I like having a thumb drive for, and I keep all my research and everything. Because oh. can I share well, the fun. opening line of this book? Do you mind if I do that? Because it's one of the best opening lines I've ever read. <laughs> When I was 18, I killed my best friend. I know, right? Tell me, you tell me, reader, that you could not go on, that you could stop yourself and not go on to the next sentence. I know. Yeah. So good. Well, well. <laughs> this has been so fun. Okay, we have Christy has one more question for you. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, which of your, this is like appeases all our, mysterious foodies out there which of your <laughs> characters would you like to share a meal with and what would it be hmm. i'd like to have some kind of you know bag of chips and a sandwich and a drink out like on a boat with morrison oh oh yeah love the boat love that yeah just yep. hanging out looking at stuff i, lo I loved all his i mean i loved how his his character was you know, so nature oriented too. So yeah. I could see that. That would be. You don't need fancy food. Like just get some. No. Like you said, some chips and a sandwich. Love that. Yeah. Yep. I love that. All right. Great. Okay. So um, it, when our listeners want to get some more information about you and your book, where should they go? Um, my website is the best place. And that is davidabriar.com. There are a whole lot of vowels. <laughs> <laughs> if you leave one out, you won't find me. So yeah. it's D A. D A V I D A B R E I E R. So extra E's and A's in there. You do have a lot of L's. We will link everything in all of our show notes and all of our social media as well. Right. Yeah. Well, this has been such fun and we're so <sighs> glad you were able to meet with us. I know it's a tough time and I really think that we have to do one final cheers I do to this too. Debut, <clears throat> debut novel. It's a cheers to you, you and sinkhole. Thank you. <laughs>